In the last video, we realized we could find the roots of higher degree polynomials by factoring. From the factors, we were able to determine the roots by inspection. This led us to ask, how can we factor higher degree polynomials? Before we answer that question, it might help to answer an easier one. What is a factor? A factor is an expression or number that divides another expression or number evenly, with no remainder. For example, what are the factors of 10? Think of other numbers, integers only, that we could multiply together to get 10. We could do 1 times 10, or 2 times 5. Are these all the possible integer answers? What about negative numbers? For example, negative 1 times negative 10. When considering possible factors, always remember to consider both positive and negative pairs. What is the remainder when we divide a number by one of its factors? Remember that by the definition of factor, the remainder when we divide a number by one of its factors must be zero. For example, 10 divided by two, which is one of its factors, yields a quotient of five with a remainder of zero. The remainder is always zero because it divides evenly. This leads us to the conclusion, if the divisor is a factor of the dividend, the remainder will be zero, and if the remainder is zero, the divisor is a factor of the dividend. So here's how that looks in the example we just did. If the divisor, which is two, is a factor of the dividend, which is 10, the remainder will be zero. The opposite is also true. If we had been told that the remainder is zero, we would know that the divisor, two, is a factor of the dividend, 10. With that in mind, how can we extend our conclusion about factors and remainders to polynomials? Why don't we try to learn through an example? Let's try to divide a polynomial, x squared minus 5x plus 6 by x minus 2. I'm going to use synthetic division for time's sake, but feel free to do this with long division yourself if you're more comfortable with that method. Let's draw the half box symbol. The divisor is already in that x minus a form with the a value being 2. So we write a 2 to the left of the box, not a negative 2. Next, we bring down the coefficients of the dividend polynomial, making sure that we have all powers of x accounted for. The x squared term has a coefficient of 1, the x term has a coefficient of negative 5, and the constant term is 6. Remember, the first step is always to bring down the first coefficient. Then we multiply the first coefficient by the a value outside the box, giving us 2, which we write under the next coefficient. We then add, not subtract, as is the case in long division, the negative 5 and the 2, to give us negative 3. Multiplying 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6, which we write under the last coefficient. Finally, we add 6 and negative 6 to get 0. The last number of our result in synthetic division represents the remainder. Here our remainder is 0. How does this relate to what we came up with on the last slide? Remember, we determined that if the divisor is a factor of the dividend, the remainder will be 0, and vice versa. In this case, that means that x minus 2 is a factor of the dividend polynomial, since the remainder is 0. This may seem unrelated, but trust me, and try to evaluate the same dividend polynomial, x squared minus 5x plus 6, at x equals 2. Substituting 2 in for all the x's gives us 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6. 2 squared is 4, and 5 times 2 is 10, so we have 4 minus 10 plus 6, which is equal to 0, the same as the remainder we found by performing synthetic division. So evaluating the dividend polynomial at x equals 2 gives us the remainder due to division by x minus 2. Did you expect this? Hopefully you already knew that this would be the case from your understanding of the remainder theorem which says that the remainder due to the division of a polynomial p of x by a divisor d of x of the form x minus a is equal to p of a. In this case, p of x is x squared minus 5x plus 6, and d of x is x minus 2, with the a value being 2. Okay, humor me a little longer here before I get to the punchline of this video, which is the factor theorem. Try to factor the polynomial we've been looking at, x squared minus 5x plus 6, to confirm that x minus 2 is indeed a factor. I'll let you pause the video and try this on your own now. Okay, so this quadratic factors nicely down to x minus 2 times x minus 3. 
x minus 2 is indeed a factor, and so is x minus 3. Keeping in mind that x minus 3 is a factor, without doing any math, what do you think we would get if we tried to evaluate x squared minus 5x plus 6 at x equals 3? Lock in your prediction now. Putting 3 in for all the x's in the polynomial, we get 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6, which we can simplify down to 9 minus 15 plus 6, which gives us 0 as our result. What conclusion can we draw here? It seems like if a binomial of the form x minus a is a factor of a polynomial, meaning it divides evenly with no remainder, then the a value is a root of the polynomial. This is, in essence, the factor theorem. If a binomial of the form x minus a is a factor of a polynomial p of x, then p of a must be 0, meaning that a is a root. And the opposite is also true. If p of a is 0, then x minus a must be a factor of p of x. Here I want to encourage you to pause the video and read over that again until you feel like you have a thorough understanding of it. And then unpause and come back. You may notice that the factor theorem is really just our conclusion from the last slide applied to polynomials, with a little help from the remainder theorem. If you swap divisor with binomial of the form x minus a, and then swap dividend with polynomial p of x, and finally replace remainder with p of a, since the remainder theorem tells us p of a and the remainder are equal, you come up with the factor theorem as we have it written. This is huge. Now we have a method to determine factors of any polynomial, including those of degree 3 or higher. If we can guess a root a of the polynomial, we'll know that x minus a is a factor. Hopefully I've piqued your interest, but I don't want to overwhelm you, so I'm going to say that this is enough for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss how we can use this concept to fully factor a polynomial, so stay tuned.